Well, hello to the people. It's been, hey, been on it. You're the, the lowdown of how we do things. Quiet. Quiet. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, contributions. Exciting. He's very talkative when he wants to be. I love it. I am obsessed with it. There's also deer who run back here all the time, and so he like just loses his shit. Amazing, yeah. incredible. Huge fan. Deer. Squirrels and like pigeons specifically. Like one of my neighbors back home in Rhode Island, she's she and her husband have lived there for like twenty years and they're so cute. And the woman, like the wife puts out like bird feed and like nuts out underneath her husband's car in the winter so like the animals can get at it Aww. and like to like dig through the snow that's so sweet it's the best thing ever until he goes outside when they're trying to eat and then i get dragged around by a 25 pound like just absolute force he's a unit <laughs> yeah, absolute <laughs> unit. we love to see it yeah is that next yeah. yep Oh my god, pretty baby. You're yes, pain. We have several cats know. that also make appearances. I love it. A whole little menagerie going on here. The only reason my dog isn't here is because she's not allowed upstairs. Aw. Big sad. But yes, uh, we are here today with our first guest in a red hot minute. Anna Friedman is here to hang out with us and talk about absolutely nothing. But um, before we really get into anything... Brooks, I would like to discuss an interaction that you and I had today that you might not have even realized was an interaction. Oh, this. This happened in our personal, just the two of us, uh, Instagram DMs. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I sent you a message because I, um... This won't come as a surprise to anyone who knows me. I started watching, I watched Our Flag Means Death. And the brain rot has set in big time. And I sent you a message saying that I watched this show and now my boyfriend has to listen to me referring to a middle-aged man as my baby girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I sent this to you when you had the little active dot next to your profile. And you were liking things in our other group chat. And I saw you, like, it literally said at the top of our personal DM, like, you are both in chat. And I saw the scene, this message pop up, and then you left. And I just thought it was hysterical that you saw what I sent you and chose not to interact with it. Might have, when the student I was waiting on showed up to a Zoom meeting? Ah. I, just I thought think it was, it was hysterical. Yeah, no, I, because they're always late, so I leave the Zoom meeting open, and of then course. eventually it dings, and it's like, oh, they're in the waiting room, and I have to be like, oh, crap, and I put down my phone, and so I, it might have been that. Happened I thought it was since. hysterical. I was like, you know what, honestly, good for her. I respect her for seeing the deranged things that come out of my mouth and just being like, you know what, nah. I just remember when we were driving to Rochester, and you were like, oh, yeah, Brooks never answers her snaps, and I was like, she answers my snaps. <laughs> Them. I know, I know, but still. <laughs> Here and there. Here Which, and I mean, there. like, is fair. I think I send you a lot more, like, absolutely just unhinged yeah. chaos than Zach does. Yeah, no, ours are just like, hey, like, look at this running weather we have. And then, I don't I don't know what ones you're sending, but... <laughs> but oh, I, I did. We have some contributions from the puppy. I love it. She's weighing in. Anyway. No, but I did get your your text today. You're like, I'm bringing this up on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm so excited that our next episode is going to be like interactions from our various group chats because this oh, is just yeah. a taste of what goes on between the three of us on a daily basis, pretty much. You had me nervous for a second. I'm like, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> no, you just saw. It appeared to me. That you saw me saying utterly deranged shit and just went, you know what, no. And left. <laughs> Which, like, I can't even fault you for. Because <laughs> I really am out here uh, referring to a middle-aged actor as my baby girl. Wait, you send me unhinged things or I send you unhinged things? I don't think you would like that. I mean, both. But yeah. like, I don't know. I like... The way that man is encouraging the freaks on Twitter, I think he might. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, like, the character. Oh, he would hate it. 
He would absolutely hate it. <laughs> anyway, before I keep talking about this, he's an actual human. <laughs> um, so well, the thing we're starting with today is a thing that uh, Zach and Anna here came up with and informed me of, and I would love to know how this like came up organically in conversation to begin with. Like, please walk me through it. I remember we were I was making us lunch yesterday and um bye bean please okay <laughs> um left just like you left the group denied chat. it's okay he comes back to me because I feed him so oh, that's how it works it's a purely transactional relationship yeah yeah I was gonna make a comment about how that's typical for men but I don't know <laughs> anyway um, why yeah, right. Feed them. Huh? <laughs> That's why you shouldn't feed them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no more food for you. I was gonna say, I, heard, I just heard you say you made him lunch, so that was, you know. Yeah, that was mistake number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what was it? Was I like putting on? Like, I think we I was like listen. We were listening to something, and I like wanted to change the music, and I think it started with like. Megan the Stallion or something and just like okay if you gave an animal or a pet a rapper's name what would it be it's a it's a conversation that my ex and I were having for like three days straight we a while it. ago yeah so I mean obviously Zach here is um intelligent and otherworldly so <laughs> can't even say it with a straight face <laughs> Wow. Uh, so, okay, so wait, do they have to be an existing rapper? We're not, like, making up rap names for, like, the concept right. of a bulldog. That's not a conversation. That's right, that is a completely different conversation. Okay. That it should be at some point, but it is really... We can circle back to that. Yeah. We count Young Boozer as an honorary rapper, who is the 41st, 41st treasurer of Alabama. That's his actual name, Young Boozer. No, it's like not. That That's a fake person. Oh, it's actually not. <laughs> I I lost my shit for like a whole afternoon when I found this That's out. That's not a real person. And until I am presented uh, with proof in the opposite, I refuse to believe it. Birth certificate. Yep. <laughs> gonna, gonna go birther on this one. Yeah, no, I need this man to upload his, to like upload a scan of his like passport or his birth certificate or something. Cause that's not a real per like that's not a real person's name. Honestly, social security card, credit card numbers, C CCV or CBV wow. or whatever is on yeah. the back of it. Yeah. And date. Works like, for me. Information. Right. Then I'll believe yeah. it. Only that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say no because that person, like, that's not real. <laughs> um, who did we end up figuring out? Um, we said that a kitten would be Machine Gun Kelly. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Interesting. Do we do we want to walk through like why we went with some of these? So <laughs> we can't really rationalize why, but we both knew automatically if a name worked or not. Yeah. Okay. No thoughts. It's, so it's by vibes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I can live with this. And honestly, I feel like Machine Gun Kelly does fit for a reason that I can't articulate. Right. <laughs> the like beginning point of it was like you would assign an animal or a pet a name that like doesn't make any sense. Right. So instead of like Meg the Stallion being named like naming a literal horse Meg the Stallion, it's like, okay, what about a like what about a duck? You know what okay. I mean? Like things that <laughs> Yeah. This I, I like. This had to <laughs> and I don't actually know this, but this had to have been partly inspired by the urban wildlife or what's it called? The guy with the kangaroo named Oh my god, Urban baby. Rescue Ranch. Urban Rescue Ranch. Um, Something like that. I think it's Yeah, that. there's a guy in Texas who has like a like a rescue farm and he has a kangaroo named... Da Baby. Da Baby. <laughs> Wait, is it because he like kicked a guy in Walmart? Wait, what? Like there's <laughs> like CCTV footage of Da Baby like kicking the shit out of somebody at a Walmart. And, like, that's oh. a kangaroo's main, like, defense method? I mean, he does have 
apology tour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I don't know if that's where that came from, but I feel like it could like I feel like we might have just connected some dots here. How um how recently did that happen? I have no idea. Okay, because I know that his kangaroo has been named a baby for like since he started making the videos, which I think was maybe like twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. Oh, okay, then that's probably kind of I think that the incident is a little bit more recent than that. But holy shit, look how the universe lined up on that one. I'm I'm a huge fan. All right, continue. Continue taking me down this road. I am fascinated by this. Who else did we come up with? I mean, it, we came up with a lot. We, we what did. was um we came with all, but there were a few that like stood out. Oh, what was Luda? Oh, Luda was like um oh fuck. Who was Luda? We really should write no, some of these down. Luda, I think we said was like a a, a gerbil or something. Yeah, gerbil came. Something. Something. Yeah. Just um, like... I know one of the ones that we didn't end up with, we didn't have an animal for Iggy Azalea. Hmm. Right, like it's a hard one. Like I can't think of one that fits and I can't think of one that doesn't fit in a way that's funny. Yeah. Right. Because like I feel Sheesh. like Biggie Fun. Smalls should be like some form of like just like those right incredibly tiny like field mice oh like if, if we're going for things that make the least sense yeah yeah but oh man what was uh we said that tory lanes could not be a snake because that made too much sense with him shooting meg but i don't remember what we landed on for him i don't remember tory lanes um I don't think I even know who that is. I'm probably going to look really uncultured here. No, nah, it's like, ugh, it turned into a really big thing because he was dating Megan the Stallion and they got into an argument and he shot her in the foot, which then the internet decided to absolutely fucking hate black women. And like she had posted like a lot of the trauma that it caused her online just to try to get people to stop harassing her about it because people were saying that she deserved it that she was a liar it didn't really happen like it was it was horrible oh my god um and she like ended up posting a bunch of like how it like how the trauma affected her and people just still kept going and going but something came out not that long ago it's been this has been ongoing for months mm -hmm. and i think it came out long ago that like there was even more proof coming out that Tori Lanes did actually shoot her in the foot. Jesus. Um, yeah, nightmare, nightmare. I feel horrible for her, oh and God, absolutely, like, yeah, and that is like not believed yeah. when something like this happens. Mm -hmm. So it got it got real deep real fast. I can see how we would go down that path. Yeah. yeah. I kind of, I used to work in retail and I may or may not have almost yelled at a customer for being like, yo, fuck Meg Thee Stallion. Like, she's a bitch. She deserved it. Like, I'm going to still like support Tory Lanez. Amazing. Incredible. Show stopping. Dude, it was great. As, <laughs> as like the manager of the store. Ah, nice. Really be like, you know what? Get the fuck out of here. I'm going to take a skateboard and hit you in the head with it because... Yeah. Like, I get think away every from... retail employee should be allowed to roundhouse kick one customer per day. Yep. I think that would solve a lot of problems. Just like <laughs> mini purges throughout your shift. Yep. This Truly... is like the better, more spread out version of the thing that Emily and I came up with in one of the episodes where it was just the two of us, which was the purge, but for retail workers. Yeah. It's, it's needed. It's it very, is... very needed. Especially I feel if like... I saw that photo of the woman who, like, brought her own little, like, concierge bell to get the attention of a waiter. I saw that. I would kill her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, I would quit on the spot. Absolutely Dude, not. There's some people that, like, come in that just straight up do not deserve to be spoken to respectfully, but out of, you know, fear for your job and your livelihood, you 
deal with it. Whoever it was that, and, like, this is just, like, you know, capitalism at its finest, whoever truncated the phrase, the customer is always right in matters of taste, to just the customer is always right, I hope you're rotting in hell. I I feel like even with the added phrase it's it's still not accurate some people yeah. just have terrible taste and yeah, should but not they're still buying it i am i i have a personal vendetta against rip and dip because oh, uh man. the guy that owns the brand has abused multiple ex-girlfriends oh and... jesus i had absolutely no idea yeah, it's like it was one of those things that like every six months somebody would post a reminder and be like, hey, by the way, don't fucking give this guy your money because he hits women. Jesus, I would uh, absolutely not be doing that anymore. Yeah, so it was a it was a fun time. And you know, what? It, it, it's like a very widely spread thing, at least in like that corner of the Internet with all of those brands. Mm-hmm. And- Every single time someone came in and they were like, haha, cat flipping you off. I was like, no, we're not doing this. Like, I'm going to show you other stuff. Like, come here. But hmm. cool. I had no idea. Shit. All right. Well, who's Post Malone? Oh, we had one for what Post Malone. What is my boy Posty? Post Malone, we was like, a, I, th- I think he was a kind of dog. I love it. Um, yeah. Why do I want to say like Charles, like Cavalier Spaniel? No, I I think it was like a, a Spanish water dog. Oh yes, yes yeah, like a Portuguese water dog. Yes, yeah, well, yeah. Portuguese yeah, water yeah, dog. Yeah. yeah, interesting. I think it would be funny if he was a poodle, because that just doesn't yeah. seem to fit. Have you guys seen the thing that's like Post Malone's mustache looks like two dogs kissing? Yes, I have, and it has never left my head. <laughs> have you guys seen the one that is um? I don't remember what it is, like AM and PM, and one of them is something, like AM is something Malone, and then PM is Post Malone. I can't remember oh, what it is. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It was on Twitter. Pre-Malone yeah. and Post Malone. So, I remember yes. when somebody photoshopped him, like, without all his tattoos, they called it Pre-Malone. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. It was, I mean, it was kind of funny. Got, it got a little laugh from me. No, I mean, it is it is a fantastic idea. I just, it reminds me of, I'm, I have tattoos pretty much from, like, here down on my whole body. And every time I uh, see pictures of myself without them, I'm like, that's gross. We don't need to go there. <laughs> no good. I am so, blank as yet. Yeah, we're, we're still, um. We're working on it. <laughs> have you gotten the the nose print yet no i need to do that i have a little like one of those like washable ink pads that they give to like children for finger painting or whatever sitting around that i have to like do that with i got um like my dog's paw print but i want to get her like little nose print too before i decide what i'm getting permanently inked on my body i love that but yeah no um, absolutely obsessed with my dog. She deserves to be immortalized. Wait, Brooks, have you settled on the little um on the little shoe, the, the little like, shoe things? No, and you know what? I I got an idea just today that there's got to be some sort of groups on some sort of social media platform for like you know the local area for tattoo artists. Yeah. And so I think I might try to find one of those and post in there and specifically say that I want a running related tattoo and see if anybody has like recommendations. Yeah. See if I can find someone who will design me one. I dig it. Do you have like a stuff or anything that you're thinking of? Not really. And that's kind of the problem. (laughs) (laughs) I've I've, like looked around for inspiration and there's nothing I really quite like. Mm. Right. And I don't know what artist to start with, so I think that would be the easiest route. Just go on there and be like, please, people. Yeah. We almost went and got tattoos with somebody, and then we didn't. Correct. Because we, we have no money. We have no money. That will, that will put a damper on the plan. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. One day. 
or actually if you come down to Rhode Island when I moved back uh, I ended up buying a bunch of <laughs> beans hey look at me I'm sorry should I egg him on shush. <laughs> yeah I was beating him in the head <laughs> he gets it with his toys all the time because he starts running as I'm throwing it and then it just Aww. um cool it's good stuff I don't know what I was saying before that. Rhode Island tattoos. Oh, yeah. I ended up with a bunch of, like, little stick to poke stuff off of Amazon. Oh, yeah. That's cute. So, Zach, yeah, Zach and I now have matching planet tattoos on our feet. I absolutely love it. Cool. Oh, Based I was about the- to reference something someone sent me once. And, Zach, you're the person who sent it to me. Who has the stick and poke that on their foot that just says foot? Oh, oh that's yeah. my ass. Yeah. Wonderful concept. Not gonna oh, lie. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, that's the equivalent of when someone takes, like, a label maker and prints out, like, apple and then sticks it on a piece of fruit. Yeah. Huge fan. Peak comedy, well, in my personal opinion. Not technically wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say you would print out a label maker and put it on the label maker. Yes. Yeah. Peak comedy. Also, one of my favorite things to do is whenever someone has an, like, someone sends an emoji in, like, any kind of messaging platform that allows you to, like, add an emoji to a message, it's just to add the same emoji but smaller. I always think that's kind of funny. Like, senior and junior. Yeah! Don't ever talk to me or my son again. Only we could infinitely nest... I know, that's the problem. You can't keep, you can only keep it going so long. Yeah. Have you seen like the Russian nesting dolls that are actually measuring cups? <gasps> no, that was a thing. Oh, oh my, god. my god. I spend a lot of my free time on um Facebook reading those like silly articles about like the best finds on Amazon. Amazing. This, oh my gosh. It's just, it's literally a set of Russian Russian nesting dolls that all fit inside each other. And I think it goes from like a cup and a half down to like half a teaspoon. Oh my God. I will be getting that for my kitchen when I have one. I'll see if I can find it and send it to Zach. That is going to be like first kitchen purchase. That's Oh my God, there was a spatula that had like a smiling egg as the actual poofy thing. It was really cute. Amazing. Incredible. Any kind of whimsical, yeah. yet also functional gadget. Huge fan. Oh my god, my kitchen timer is a penguin. Amazing. That's another one that I can send to Zach. It was like five bucks, I think. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Oh. Hey. He said, not anymore. <laughs> He's done. He's ready Today. to go. Um... Where were we going? My brain stopped at don't ever talk to me or my son ever again. I do have a question. If you guys could give rap names to your current pets, what would they be? That's a good one. Like, make up names. Or the names of current rappers. Oh, current. Yeah, current names rappers. of current rappers based on like your pet's personality. Shoot, what did we... Piper we... would probably be like Young Gravy or something. Oh my god, I love him. Just, like, su- like, super bubbly, fun, like, nothing very serious. And honestly, I don't- I have a pet snake. Her name is Alphaba. Oh, yeah. Th- oh, they I both can grab have... her. Hold on. Come here, my princess. How is, um... Oh my god, I'm blanking on your snake's name. Really? Yes! That's right. He's good, noodling about, as per usual. Getting yeah. chunky. Oh, I know. <laughs> No, he's 42 uh, centimeters now. I just oh measured God. him three days ago. Hi, honey, honey, bye. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is my sweet, just... spoiled little princess. And I honestly have no idea what her rap name would be because she's, as far as like animals that have personalities, I feel like you get a bit more personality out of a dog or a cat than you do a reptile but she's very like chill very calm not particularly high strong doesn't bite or anything so i don't really know who like a, like just like super chill rapper would be because usually there's a lot of like not every rapper but like there's a lot of energy 
going on, at least in the lyrics, usually. So, like, I don't know. Ghostface killer. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Or that could be Um, Harley, just because he has his little, like, weapon nose. This one. Yes, he is. I like it. But yeah, Piper would definitely be Young Gravy. I really don't know about this one. What did we say Echo was? Echo? Yeah, we gave her one. And now I'm blanking. Fantastic question. Now I feel like a terrible dog owner for not remembering my dog's fake rap name. Dude, I don't even remember. Well, I think that you said that the dogs collectively were the Wu Tang Clan. Yes, that is true. The three dogs that are currently at the house are the Wu Tang Clan. I like it. Ooh, okay. Do you have any ideas, Missy? <laughs> oh, shoot. Dude, what did we say her dog was? Did we get her name? Is she Iggy? Can I help you? No. <laughs> She's pretty good. She's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, low key, she could be like Ariana <laughs> or something, because she's like a little like pure princess. Mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about this one. And honestly, Brooks, I don't think I can weigh in on your cats because they have different personalities when it's just you than versus when I'm at your house. Yeah, I I can't weigh in any of these because I don't know rappers. So that's why I'm sitting here quietly. Oh, come on. You can name a rapper. Yeah. I mean, I can name a rapper, but like I don't have enough knowledge to try to. Oh, Oh, you love hip hop? Name three rappers. (laughs) Do you want to ask them about the Beatles? Oh, yes. How I'd do love we to do? be asked about the Beatles. Oh, yes. Bridget is also big Beatles. Love, love. Um, We were saying, like, what animals would the different Beatles be? Mm. <laughs> what did I say? I think we said um, mm. Ringo would be a horse because of the really long snout. Interesting. I was going personality-wise. I was going to say that Paul McCartney is absolutely an old English sheepdog, like Martha. Dude, that I tracks. Could see that. Yeah, because we, we said he was a goose. Did we say he was a Did goose? We? No, John no. Lennon is a goose because he woke up every day and chose violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> the tail. The whole gang's here. Gang's here. Yeah, gang, no, gang. we definitely the said gang's Paul. All here. Yeah. <laughs> That's a SpongeBob oh, reference. Sorry, Brooks. That's something to actually tattoo on your fingers with a little... Oh my god, I know, but it wouldn't last long. Yeah, it's tough. I tried doing a stick and poke on, like, my palm, and it's pretty much all fallen out, except for a couple, like, itty-bitty dots. Very cute. Yeah, um, no. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with my John Lennon is a goose comment. <laughs> no, I, that's perfect. Tracks, yeah. Yeah. What about, um... Oh my god, what did we say George was? The, this man, I don't know, and this is so because he's my favorite. Me too. Although I do love Ringo, he doesn't get enough credit, and he's going to outlive them all out of spite. Have you seen his artwork? It's it's the like shitty MS Paint art. I want to wallpaper my house in it. <laughs> uh, it's so but yeah, good. No, um, he's going to outlet. He's going to be the last surviving Beetle out of spite for being the least favorite beetle in the public eye for so many years. That yeah. will be his revenge for getting so like few songs on every album. One song. Every album he was allowed to sing. And that's yeah. I know, and then, like, the white, like, even the white album, they're like, you get one per, so- per like, disc. Live yep. with it. Ow. Like, this album has 40 songs on it. Yeah. You get two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, Shout um... out to whoever photoshopped the cover of Beatles for Sale to be just Paul McCartney, and it said, Beatle for Sale, you get one. I have to find that. That one made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh my god. But what, hmm, what would George Harris... Maybe he's like a turtle. Yo, I could see that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's just kind of, I don't know, it feels right, because he was, like, the quiet Beatle, but also, like, the, like a lot of his later stuff, 
I just feel like there's kind of like a sort of like spirituality attached to the image of a turtle. Yeah. That could in fit America- in with a lot of his later like Like after dabbling he- in the whole like Hare Krishna movement and all that stuff. I feel like that makes sense, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I feel like at least like this house where next to a pond so there's a lot of snapping turtles. And like the one rule was that you give them their space and they're very calm and quiet and like perfect. And then as soon as you like go near them, they they're like they'll take your finger off. So I feel like and Even obviously like I did not know in person, but like <laughs> no <laughs> I, don't know. I feel like My turtle man, makes sense because like very calm and like you know, but then like don't fuck with them. Yeah. Yeah, that seems fair. What are, what are we switching? A goose. Oh, right, right, right. And oh. I honestly don't know about Ringo. I mean, like, the horse thing seems kind of mean. That's that. It is a little bit. That's like. But, like, that's what he was known for. Like, this he was is also incredibly true. You know? Hi. Yeah. Hi. He was definitely, my dad and I got into an argument that, and we didn't talk to each other for like three days because we disagreed on who the best Beatle was. <laughs> so. I mean, the best Beatle is George Harrison. Thank you. I'm going to tell him that. Was? Dad was saying John Lennon. Oh, Ew. oh no. I, I know. Literally cancel Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of his yeah, Twitter. No, yeah, um, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. Hi, where are you going? Oh my gosh. She's so cute, dude. Thank you. She's my incredibly spoiled little princess. And I think it's so funny that, like, technically, she is one of nature's perfect killing machines. But um, sometimes when I'm about to fall asleep, I hear her rustle up through the plants in her enclosure. And then I hear the sort of quiet, sandpapery sound of her slithering on the rock ledges that are the backdrop of her tank. And then I'll hear silence for a couple seconds, and then a giant thunk as she falls off. (gasps) And also, she won't pick up food by herself. Like, if it's lying on a surface in her enclosure, she will not eat it. Mom has to feed it to her with tongs. Love that. She is a very spoiled little princess who would not make it two seconds in the wild. Even though, technically, evolutionarily speaking... She's an apex predator. <laughs> but you're not. Not really. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? And also, oh my god, I cannot believe how heavy you're getting. I haven't had to hold her in, like, just one hand for quite some time. Thick princess. How old is she? Uh, oh my god, she's three this, at, like, May 18th, I believe it is. Nineteenth, yeah, May nineteenth. She's three. My little princess. Saw. What's the sign before Gemini? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I know Aries is April, cause that's me. Love to see it. Oh wait, you too. No, I'm a Pisces, but oh, I know just about nothing, other than like my own, and then like a couple friends. And I just like to know what fruit tree I am based on my star sign. Oh my god. I'm a simple uh, woman. I see a list. I click on it. I feel that. I used to work um, for Lush. So all of my coworkers were really heavily into astrology. Honestly, I love that for them. Uh, it was really educational. Every time I had a shift with one of the girls that that's really like what she spent most of her time on. Um, cause I learned a lot about myself That's fun. and the other people. And the majority of what I learned is that water signs are big fat crybabies and interesting. That track. It is very true. Wait, Brooks, what sign are you again? Wait, bro. Okay. Yeah, that tracks. Okay. I think we've had this conversation before. Mm-hmm. One of my best friends in college was a Libra and she was the best. So. I feel like that means that you are the best. Yeah. Well, it's just like the the thing is the scales. And she's incredibly indecisive. 
yeah. the most indecisive person I've ever met. And I've met yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's eerily accurate. Wait, who That's why I don't think there's, like, nothing to it, you know? Yeah. It's the little things like that. I don't know. I will say, uh, if you sign up for CoStar, the daily horoscopes can be really funny. Oh, Even I have a, yeah, those are fun. I have a co-star. Love it. I get the notifications every day and like on my watch. So I get to, uh, yeah, those are, those are a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to look up what her, how funny would it be if she's the snake one? Ooh. There's a snake one. Or I don't know. I thought there was. What's no, it's a, this, it's a crab. Cancer is a crab. What's a Scorpio? She's not a Scorpio, but what's the, is it not a snake? Or is it a scorpion? I'm an idiot. Well, now I'm Googling it. I mean, that <laughs> is right. pretty much your, like, job description on the podcast at this point. Yeah. Resident oh, Googler. Yeah. <laughs> um, she is a Taurus, a bull. Interesting. I mean, I don't think she really cares. And a Scorpio is a scorpion. Yeah. Okay, cool. So at least we've cleared that up. Yeah, too bad for being. But yeah. I'm tired, buddy. What is next on our... um? Actually, the uh, next thing is a talking point that I personally would just like to rant about. Because um, yeah. her name you is said- Alphaba. <laughs> which is the name of the green girl in the book and musical... Wicked, which this one. They <laughs> thank you. Which they are have been trying to adapt into a film for years now, and it has been in development hell for so very long. And then on Twitter the other day, the director of the movie announced that they will be splitting it into two movies. And I'm just really pissed off because of course in his like, you know, announcement he has these things about how like, oh, we can't like cut out these songs or these characters like we're just like sacrificing the integrity of the story the musical with intermission is like two and a half hours so why not just have it be a two and a half hour movie it is because they want to sell more tickets and i am so pissed off because i already had so little hope for this movie when they announced the main cast because first of all they have ariana grande as glinda which made me really annoyed Because, like, obviously, she has very impressive vocal ability. And I don't really care that she, like, did get her start in musicals. No, Everyone knows she was not going to be breaking out the, like, Broadway diction for this. Like, they just wanted, you know, to capitalize on the fact that she was in that, like, really poppy version of popular that was actually, like, on the radio or whatever. Like, she was not going to be singing them as actual Broadway show tunes. And, like, the idea of, um, Cynthia Enviro, I believe her name is, as Elphaba, like, honestly, she would have crushed it on Broadway. Like, extremely, extremely talented. But my thing is, with, I'm a big Broadway nerd. I'm a big, I'm a big slut for musicals. Um, you can get away with the actors being a little more aged up on a stick. Oh, hello. Good yawn. Uh the actors being a little more aged up when it is an actual stage production because like you know the distance involved and usually everyone like in a broadway production just because of like logistics of having like actual like teenagers play teenage characters doing like eight shows a week or whatever like everyone's aged up like you know you can it makes it easier to suspend your disbelief my thing about the movie is that the characters are supposed to be like freshmen in college essentially And, like, I don't buy that with either of them. So, yeah, I... I'm just really annoyed about it. I really don't have a concluding thought. Um, I'm just sad, because it's, like, my favorite musical ever. And I was really hoping that there would be, like, a decent, accessible version of it. And my hopes for that have been crushed. Can I ask a question? Do you think it's going to be, like the last two Harry Potter movies where they literally broke it up for no reason and then just had like a massive scene that was totally unnecessary. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And my thing, and like, I, and like 
the people who are trying to defend it are like, oh, maybe they'll, like, take some stuff that got cut out of the book. You know that they won't. The book is so much weirder and less public and less like mass marketable than the musical they're just gonna add like an extra song in hopes of getting like a grammy nomination for it or like the oscar for like best original song or whatever so i'm salty standably thank you everyone for coming to my ted talk you have me, like, singing songs from Popular in my head now. I love Wicked so much. I want to go see it again so bad. I'm going to sketch where you write when- your name, Missy. When's the movie supposed to actually come out? Like, 2024 or yeah, something? Yeah, 2024. Like- and then, like, they're probably going to take another two years for the second one. And I'm like, Why? Wait why like there are so many good options that theoretically did exist out there like for example like at this point like the girl who voiced moana what's her name auli cravalho she would have been great she would have been a great alphaba yep she would she would have looked convincing like you know looked convincingly the age that the characters are supposed to be Mm -hmm. why couldn't we just have that they don't want us to have nice things. They don't. Every year of my life, that becomes more and more apparent to me. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get it. Like, but aw. <laughs> I have a horrifically dark sense of humor. It's okay. My therapist um, laughs at all of my dark jokes. So. We love it. Love we it. love to see it. Okay, I'm going to put you back, because you're going to start distracting me even more than you already are by, like, trying to climb in my hair or something. I feel like all the animals in the pod today. Seriously. Oh, bro, I played Anna the part from the podcast with Ed Markey when they played uh, Snapple. Playing what? When they played the round of, of, of Am I the Mass Hole with Ed Markey. Oh, oh, this isn't this slinging meat thing that you sent to no, the chat today. No, but the butcher box ads have are a timeless. Like, so good. The, one, of the ones that, one of the first ones that that I heard, they were making the most terrible puns, and then Beautiful. there was like seven minutes of silence, and then they were all like, "We used to work in the White House." <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Yeah, like like we advised the president. You know. Making like and John Love is making like meat jokes. <laughs> you used to grade my papers and now you receive messages about me calling middle aged men my baby girl. <laughs> so True. What a world we live in. Yeah, you know, life will take you down a funny path. Meant to be. That really was so great though. My mom is also born and raised in Massachusetts and she had done or has said that <laughs> pretty much every single thing that they brought up in the podcast that Zach showed us earlier. You're actually, you're going to have to send me the segment now because I want to know what everyone's talking about. It's very good. So good. (laughs) We do stand. I do have to listen to the clips you said, because I did listen to the podcast, but like I have, but I can't recall the specific clips. I still need to to listen to them. Mm -hmm. I was laughing very hard when i sent you the job thing that i'm working on and they're like write a birthday i was like oh my god it's an actual birthday message <laughs> so you can't do it it's fantastic. you should rewatch that episode so you can pull some of the things they said and, yeah. i need the inspiration <laughs> i dig it so the next thing we have listed i think zach might have been the one to add this to the document so would you like to share with the class what did I add? That came from a meme that I sent y'all. Oh, then do you want to share? A road truck meme. Which you should send because I want to like put that in the description so I can make sure that people know we're not just pulling this stuff out of our ass. It's so like, a lot of stuff we are, but I like to give yeah. credit where credit is due. And it's also, it's not a Star Trek related question. They just put the question over a picture of Q from the next generation and I don't know why. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, yeah. Please. The floor is yours. 
well, to, to preface it, so it was, it was a two frame meme. And the first one said something along the lines of you guys are always arguing about whether hot dogs are sandwiches, but they are, the real... they are tacos. But the real question is whether lasagna is just spaghetti cake. I don't yes. know if it's spaghetti cake, but it's 100% pasta cake. Yeah, I mean, spaghetti is just a specific shape of pasta, but... Yeah. So you don't put spaghetti in the cake, but pasta cake... Absolutely. Yeah. I think it is. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be. I started thinking, like, lasagna tends to have more layers than cake, but some cakes are really layered. Yeah, you ever seen a like, wedding cake? Yeah. Yeah, I tried to really think through it in my head. Are you Googling the exact definition of cake right now? No. <laughs> That would not be <laughs> unprecedented. <laughs> I know you too well. Yeah, no, this is too specific. This isn't working to our uh, advantage. An item of soft, sweet food made from a mixture of flour, shortening, eggs, sugar, and other ingredients baked and often decorated. Okay, no, Way that's too bullshit. Much. That definition's wrong. Well no specific. Yeah, I'm looking because for, like... A crab cake is the total opposite of all yeah. of that. So, like, what kind of, like, layer? Like, does it have to be layered? Does there have to be a certain shape? Like, because I feel as though lasagna is, like, it absolutely does count as a pasta cake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, based on the fact like, that we're calling that a pasta cake, could we extrapolate a definition of a cake that involves, like, X number of different layers in, in like, a certain order? Oh, did you find something? I'm seeing an interesting expression here. I went looking for second opinions. Beautiful. Um, the Merriam-Webster site, they have one similar to the one I already read. Mm -hmm. But then they also have a bread-like food made from a dough or batter that is usually fried or baked in small flat shapes and is often unleavened. A flattened, usually round mass of food that is baked or fried. Okay. These we can work with. Right. It's not really flattened per se. I mean, it's say it flat to compared to other foods. It's flat. Yeah, it is baked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that like just makes me even more comfortable saying yes. I was going to fight for yes, even if we couldn't find a less yeah. ingredient specific breakdown type definition. I was genuinely curious where this was going to go because sometimes we have ones that we think aren't controversial and then they're so controversial. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones where we like would kill each other if we were in the same room. Absolutely, absolutely. I wonder, does the definition of a cake change depending on uh, which culture that you are currently a part of and like where you are geographically? Because that's one of the things. I don't know if you guys watched the Great British Baking Show, but like when they did bring in like baked goods from other cultures, like there were things from. <laughs> Um, I think it was Asia, there was literally was a cake that had like 10 different layers and they all had to be even and it was cake frosting times huh. 9 or 10. So I would be curious if that definition that, of cake yeah. is consistent throughout different regions. Yeah, I don't know. Because I mean, like, a lot of people have said that like, American, like, desserts are, like, way sweeter than, like, what a lot of other cultures, like, similar things in other cultures. But then I've also heard that, like, American, like, like, the, like, mass market chocolate, like, is, like, considered, like, kind of not as sweet compared to the, like, mass market chocolate that exists, like, in the UK or whatever. Like, this girl from the UK made a video of herself trying a Hershey bar, and she's like, oh my god, like, why is it, like, so dark? I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? Huh. So. That's fine. I don't know. Man. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Lots to ponder. M much nice. to think about. Now I'm just reading definitions of cake on Urban Dictionary, and I don't know why I'm doing this. Find anything this fun? About that. Um. <laughs> I mean, there's some different ones. The, one of the most common ones is apparently it refers to a woman's behind. Oh yeah, you yeah. Got that cake. Yeah, y'all yeah. got that. Also, a kilo of cocaine. Oh, okay. 
know that. Um, this person has labeled it as something you never actually get in the game portal. Correct. <laughs> that, that, the portal theme was like the soundtrack to my entire high school career. I love Portal you... and Portal 2 so very much. Yes. <laughs> portal 2, my beloved. Um, Wheatley's poor little meow meow. I can fix him. Can you redeem it? What else we got? Any other fun definitions of cake? Not really. Um, <laughs> it's a lie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it most certainly is, if you're playing Portal. A piece of ass that you have no intention of having a relationship with, but is there for fun? Okay, yeah. I am now on my fourth page. I love that for you. I'm glad you're having fun. <laughs> to talk on the phone with a certain special someone late at night. That's... That one I've never heard. How would you even use that in context? Like, I'm well, talking... They, they have to put it in context. So, Jimmy and I are going to cake tonight. <laughs> That's not real. Someone's making that up. That isn't <laughs> real. Is to make sweet talk, and the example is, stop caking, you don't... <laughs> No, that's not real. Sorry. <laughs> it's not real. Uh, man. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fake. This is the uh, second time I've seen it defined as the bromance between Luke Hemmings and Callum Hood. I don't know who those people are. Okay. Oh, they're in um Five Seconds of Summer, I think. Interesting. Uh, Boy bands are secret love. But don't mind. That's fun. It was really great. And that was it. And the Beatles, because they're technically a boy band. Oh, Beatles are 100% a boy, boy, oh, boy band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, to gas some broad's head up, make her feel like you love her when you don't. Ow. <laughs> Who hurt that man? Yeah. Okay, some of these I would never say out loud. Okay. Oh no, okay. there are some that I I'm not saying until we're not on air. <laughs> well, like ones that I would actually just never say. Like people are offensive, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that uh, too. I would be really scared to look up nut on our production. <laughs> oh yeah, God no, no thank you. There's a street in Albany called McNutt Street, and every time I buy, yeah, I do <laughs> that. Okay, we're all we're all teenage boys here. Oh yeah, on the inside, nice. Oh wow, this person really went into details about how it's um, it means marijuana, but really? like That's baker refers to a person who may sell or distribute cake. Like yo, about to go meet my cake in the parking lot. Cake pan may refer to the instrument which the cake is baked. <laughs> That's not real. That's fake. Wait, hold on. I feel like if you're going to talk to somebody about cake, if you actually went to a bakery, that would be so much more satisfying than if you than if you bought weed. That could just be me, though. I don't disagree. Yeah, I'm here for it. This is so detailed. <laughs> do we need to? Do we need to like close the page and move on? Yeah. Before you fall down another <laughs> awful rabbit hole. Move on without me. I'm gonna screenshot it, this thing and send it to y'all. This particular. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me too. I'll really put on one page, though. We like to conclude with the question that uh, Brooks put in the document that I'm so excited to talk about. Oh, this last one. I'm, I'm like I'm so excited to see what we have for this one. Literally, I was in like having an existential crisis driving to. Oh yeah. <laughs> You were in my car. I haven't sat in a passenger seat in like a year. What am I supposed to do with myself? My feet have no job and my hands had no job. So I like, love it. I don't know. That's what pockets are for. Did okay. we did we read the question? No. Would you like to? <laughs> I was like, are we answering it? Or are we gonna say what it is? <laughs> you have to extrapolate the question based on our answers. Huh. That's a fun episode. 
there's an idea anyway this is something that has been really bothering me lately and i don't know why it's like suddenly i don't know what to do interesting but like if you're just standing there what are you supposed to do with your hands if there's not a pocket then they get clasped and go behind your back yeah i'll do that or i like cross my arms a lot yeah is it weird to like just stand with them straight down by your sides yes no nope. natural with their arms at their side yeah no just but it is <laughs> well, look, look, okay, like I get Buckingham they... Palace guard ass bitch. <laughs> well, that's just where we naturally dangle. I had a cattail when I. Did. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look natural. Like it doesn't look natural. Though. You're just standing there, like. Yeah, it's it weird. Looks... I don't like it. Yes. It does feel wrong, but it shouldn't, and that's why it bothers me. And then I'm, and then I'm okay, just like, it well, shouldn't. I'm gonna cross my arms because then I look like I'm closed off. But, you know, there's also many things in our society that shouldn't be that we're still dealing with. That's why my arm's behind my back. I'm so open and vulnerable all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been primarily thinking about this a lot during classes. You know, because I'll, I'll, like, ask discuss discussion questions. And, you know, students, will, they'll, they'll be talking, and sometimes they, you know, talk for a, a little while, you know, 30 seconds or so. And I don't know what to do. I'm, like, nodding thoughtfully and all that, but I'm like, what do I do with my hand? But don't you oh, have, like, like a like a little clicker for the projector? Like, I feel like that's a thing one is doing with their hands, if you're at least holding it. Well, then you still have to put your arms somewhere. Okay. I mean, again, I am I am a crossed arm default human being. And also, See, I, I do a lot of talking with my hands. Yeah. But if you're not talking, that's the thing. Okay, then yeah, pretty much crossed arm default uh, in either pants pockets or hoodie pocket, if I have them, or jacket pocket. Uh, occasionally, a little behind the back action, if I'm like, where, like, if I'm like in the outfit I'm in now, which is leggings that don't have pockets and a the sweatshirt that doesn't have any pockets, like, that would either be crossed arms or behind my back. I just crack mm -hmm. all my fingers. Yeah, I, I do be cracking my joints a lot. And actually, I think I have arthritis in um, just one joint <laughs> on my finger. That see seems it. to have popped up recently. I'm just going to ignore it until it goes away. And if it doesn't, um, we'll move on from there. Also, there's not a lot you can do about it anyway. It's probably fine, I hope, I think, maybe. I feel like this whole thing is so dependent on, like, the actual perspective you're seeing it from. Because mm -hmm. like, cause you're totally right. It shouldn't be weird to just, like, stand there with, like, your arms there because that is... it feels that's weird. It yeah. feels weird. And then also, like, I don't know about you guys, but I am a highly anxious person. And that's why I have been because my anxiety is that bad that I can't leave so my house. <laughs> Bitch. Oh my god, who's there, buddy? You want to Oh, yeah. Um, um, but, like, yeah, so, like, when you're thinking about it 24 7, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so much worse. Right. So then, if you think that, like, when you're thinking about it constantly and then you let your arms hang, you're like, but is this what I'm supposed to be doing? No, okay. Because when you, because like if I'm like in line or whatever and I'm like thinking about like literally anything else, I'll just be like, you know, stand with my arms crossed behind my back. Like, and I'm like, yeah, this is perfectly fine. But if I think about it, I'm like, uh, uh, uh. yeah. So just get a service dog is my Love solution. That. I can just. My solution is just keeping him with me at all times. I have, like, my little, like, fidgety noodle or this just fun little rock I enjoy. Nice. I've got a lot of little things to do with my hands, because I don't like to not be doing things with my hands. And frankly, if I am, like, unless I am watching, I've talked about this on the podcast before, unless I am watching a brand new movie for the first time or, like, having a moment where I'm like, I'm really gonna sit down and, like, appreciate, like, turn off all the lights and appreciate this film. Or if I'm watching a foreign film where I have to be reading and processing, like, the sound and the visuals at the same time, I am literally always, like, cross-stitching. Or, like, playing something on my Switch. Or, like, literally anything to do with my hands while I am, like, watching a show that, like, does not require my, like, rapt attention. Yeah. I love when I'm conscious, I'm literally never not moving. 
Yeah, it kind of scares me a little bit. I like, try to keep a lot, it even for me, level. and I'm oh, a lot. <laughs> but you can't see my legs shaking, and I'm tapping my fingers. Just, do you just... also, do you like sway back and forth as you're yep. waiting for the students? Yep. I don't say put. That's for okay. sure. Yeah, I do a lot of like if I'm like, in line. There's a lot of like just kind of like casual weight shifting. Yeah, because I can't yeah. be still as like I as a human person cannot be still. I think the thing that's made me so conscious of it lately is like when you're in front of a room full of people like that, like they notice everything that you do. And so if I even like, if I put my hand in a pocket or something, I'll see eyes follow my hand to my pocket and it makes me very self-conscious. I'm like, is this, is this not- like I completely understand, but also like if you're sitting at a desk and the only like new visual stimulus to be like focusing on is up in front of you, like that's where your eyes gonna be drawn whether or not you're actually like being like oh she's she's doing something weird like yeah, they're just it, up there that's what people are looking at yeah but it's still no matter the the reason it has the same result that i oh, know that they're seeing oh absolutely yeah I no i completely get that I, that's why like oh my god every What's time I had, every time i had to present for any class i wanted to set myself on fire the thing that I find very weird about this is that I've, it's just sort of bothering me the last few weeks, even though I've been teaching for 14 years. <laughs> just like all of a sudden, I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my hands. There's actually, uh, this could be, one of the reasons for that could be, and this is a pattern I noticed with myself, um, the worms in my brain tend to become more active in the uh, couple weeks after the spring forward because the increased amount of uh, daylight uh, makes your brain activity spike, and it takes a couple weeks for you to even back out. Interesting. A possibility to consider. Yeah. In the meantime, I just really haven't settled on what to do with my hands. Definitely down the sides feels weird. I don't want to cross and be cut off. Oh, okay, oh, bye. What has happened? I don't know. They don't like us still- anymore. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. They're entitled. They're entitled to their opinions. I'll blame them. <laughs> yeah, really. That's fair. This is this is precise again, this is precisely what I thought earlier today. I was like, you know what, yeah. If she doesn't want to deal with that, I can understand. Wait. Um, Bridget is very into, like, film and stuff, and Anna's mom got, y- 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 what was, y- y- with the Boston Marathon, what did you oh, get? Oh, I got an Emmy? Yeah, she got, <laughs> um, an Emmy, yeah! Wait, wait, did you- No, do, do not wanna... national, regional. I, uh, Still! It, it, okay, an Emmy. An Emmy. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Right? That's Thank so you. fun. <laughs> Not to mention, she's wearing the shirt from when she worked for National Geographic also. Hell yeah. <laughs> you have fans. You do. You have a fan you. base. <laughs> I absolutely love it. All right. I don't know how much time we lost to the podcast ghost there, but, you know. No, I think it, we hit an hour. Like I, I think Okay, we're... you know what? In that case, those are numbers I can live with. And I think... Yeah. I think we've hit all of our points pretty well. I think I'll just have to amputate my arms. I think that's the uh, the solution. (laughs) That I won't have to worry anymore. I feel like there might be steps you can take before that, but we'll keep that as a solid, like, plan F. Z. Z. (laughs) Z. No, none of that. I couldn't get either of the Meredith brothers to explain why their word for Z sounds like a typo. We're not having that. I gotta get them back on here sometime. We'll get there eventually. But yeah, all right. It's been real, my friends. Thank you for fighting with us. As always, we appreciate each and every single one of you. And special thanks to our guest, Anna Friedman, here. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to promote? Twitter, Instagram, OnlyFans. I don't know. Yeah, let's see. Um, let me get back up on the couch real quick. I got you, my dude. Um, 
So actually, yeah. there is a very, very cool thing that one of my friends from college um, and her girlfriend yeah. are doing. Hell yeah. Up. It's called the Run to Home Base. Um, they are part of a team that is participating in the run, and 100% of the donations go towards um, veterans that, you know, have health issues from being in the military for the families of soldiers that have unfortunately passed on. Um, but it is, my brain's a little like, woo, right now. Happens to um, us. But it is a really fantastic thing because vets and their families really do not get enough help Hell once yeah. they come home. All right. And um, it's a really cool thing. You should totally check it out. You should absolutely, everyone should donate even oh, like yes. bucks if they can. Link that in the description on both the uh, video and audio version of the podcast. So uh, the run to home base, give that a look, see what it's all about. It sounds like an amazing cause and yeah. I think, that, I think that's going to wrap us up for tonight. We will be back again next week sharing some uh, cursed interactions from our personal group chat so oh. you can get a very it's fun get look into place. what goes on between the three of us on pretty much a day-to-day basis at this point. Yeah. All right, but it's been real, Anna. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back again next week. Adios, everybody. Bye. Bye. This week's episode of the Fighting with Friends podcast was hosted by Bridget Kelly, Zach Calderon, and Dr. Sarah Brooks, featuring special guest Anna Friedman. You can find other episodes of the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, or your other favorite listening platform. Follow us on Twitter at BridgetKelly98, at Zach Calderon, and at Anne Sarah Said. Rate and review us on your podcatcher of choice, like, comment, and subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitch, and join our Discord community using the links in the description. You can also help support us via the ACAST supporter feature, or consider donating to our Patreon. Thanks for listening!